Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Adult Arts and Crafts from the Warren County Library. My name is Mary Ellen and today we're celebrating autumn. A lot of the leaves outside in our area haven't changed yet because of the rainy weather that we've had, but that doesn't mean that you can't have colorful leaves inside. So today we're going to color coffee filter paper in the shape of leaves that we can hang either as a mobile like this, which you could hang in your window or anywhere in your home, or if instead you have a branch and you'd like to attach leaves to the branch like this, it would make a beautiful centerpiece for your Thanksgiving table. So if you have a branch, this is a, a birch branch, that would be an option. So take a walk outside and see what you have in terms of wood, and then you can decide how you want to hang your coffee filter leaves. So let's get started. <clears throat> so here are some leaves for inspiration that I've made from coffee filters. And as you see, you can make them any color that you like and all the colors of autumn are available to you in your watercolor palettes. So, I'm gonna show everything that you have at home that you might use. You can use a watercolor palette like this to paint your coffee filters. You can use your watercolors that are in a tube that I've placed here in my palette. Or you can even use acrylic paint like this one. And I've just squeezed some into a bowl and I put some water with it so it wasn't quite as thick. Then it'll paint just like watercolor or your watercolor brush pens. So know that you can dip into your kit supplies and use Crayola markers like this if you don't have any of the fancy Tombow markers. But if you have the Tombow markers, let me tell you, they are really fun to use and I'll show you them too. So what I'll be showing you is all of these supplies used to make leaves. And then you can decide what you wanna make with your leaves. So I'm going to move that off the table. <clears throat> now, when you paint uh, anything, even, even your regular watercolors, you need to be on a surface that will not uh, absorb the water, a non-absorbent surface. So usually I tape my watercolor paper down onto something that uh, will keep the water from running right through. So sometimes I use a book cover like this and that would be something that you would use today underneath your work surface. Something that I have found that works really well for me is the back of signs from the library. If they've been laminated, they are, have a very, very nice surface on which I can uh, paint and the paint will not go through and it'll show up very well. So I'll be using that and that might be something that isn't easy for you to find, but it happens to be something I have. How about freezer paper? You could use something like that. So if you've seen the class description on our calendar, you'll see that I did offer a leaf shape template. And if you have Google Docs, that's easy to find. And you can cut these out and use these shapes to mark your freezer, your uh, coffee filters. Now, if you don't, you can trace any leaf that you find outside. There are a lot of them on the ground right now, and you and, and right away have a template to use. So, as you can see, I use these round coffee filters that you can buy a whole container of them for a very, very reasonable amount. And I've taken my templates, the ones that I had shared with you, and as you can see, I laid them down and I drew around them with a pencil and then I cut them out. So I'm going to do several at a time, so probably four or five coffee filters together and I'll staple it in several places so when I cut them out, they'll be, uh, there won't be any shifting, all right? So you can see it's ready to cut out and now you can see some of the stacks of leaves that I have cut out. Just put that down on the side. So as you see, 
if you stack your coffee filters, you can make many, many leaves at a time. If you're looking for a particular leaf, in this case, I wanted to uh, find uh, an oak leaf. You can go online and find a picture of an actual oak leaf and uh, cut those out too. So you can see that that's what the, uh, the cut leaves look like. Now, if you were doing this with children, which you certainly, certainly could, um, I'll just pick up a couple of these leaves to use. They could just randomly paint the coffee filter uh, with fall colors and you could cut the leaves out later. You could also cut the, uh, you could fold the coffee filter in half and cut many at once if you were interested in doing that too. So I just chose two of the leaves here that I had cut and now I'm going to go about showing you how to paint them. This is the fun part for me anyway. So because it's white on white, it's very hard for you to see. So I'm going to, I've got my cup of water like you would with any watercolor. I've got a, um, a rag with a paper towel on it in case I have too much water on my brush and I decide to dry it off. I'll bring that closer so you can see if I dry it off. And I have acrylics here and watercolors here. So what I think I'm going to do is take some of this bright yellow and actually start painting the coffee filter so you can actually see where it's sitting. So as you can see, it's very, very flimsy. But if you wet it down with a little bit of color, I'll grab some watercolor. You see the watercolor is just coming out the same as the acrylic. I kind of like to do two at a time. So I think that's what I'll probably do for you. So you can see, oh, I tore that one. Of course, the first one I do, I'm gonna show you what not to do, which is be a little soft with them. That's why it's good with the kids' ones that you cut after they color because you have to be a little bit gentle because this is a very fine paper. It's a fine paper, but amazingly strong as a filter. Uh, sometimes it's hard to even staple through a stack of them. So let me grab a little bit of this one too. I kind of think that starting with a, the palest color is a good idea in any case, because then you can always build up darker colors as you go. Now you can see that some of the water is starting to pool up on my paper. So it is also good <coughs> to have a little bit of tissue nearby. If it's too wet, you can also dry it out. I'm trying to flatten this out so it doesn't have a bunch of wrinkles in it. That's why I tore it. I pulled it a little bit too hard. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to grab some of the watercolor. Here's a, here's a green. And I'll try just putting a little bit of green on, on this one. And here's a little bit a darker green. Put a little green over here. So if you're doing more than one at a time, you can add the same color as soon as it's, as long as it's on your brush. So here's some red. And it's nice that when the red blends in with the green, sometimes it makes a nice brownish tone and the leaves are going to be doing the same thing, the real leaves. So you can see that this looks very random, but as you begin to go on and on, it gets more and more beautiful. So, doesn't look like much yet. So let me take some of that additional water off so we can see what we're doing because it's starting to become hard to see where the leaf starts and the leaf ends. And the part, the, the uh, material I like best using is the uh, markers. So if you have a plastic coated section, you can use the plastic as your template. Let's put some, some orange, because I haven't put any orange in there. Now, instead of using orange paint, I'm picking up some of this orange 
marker. And do you see how nicely this works? So now it's going to brighten that up a bit. I'll take some red. Now this process can take as little time as you want or as much time as you like. I really enjoy doing it and I can spend a long time uh, relaxing painting in this fashion. Um, you can see that I'm laying down colors from the Tombow markers. So here's a nice brown. And when you put something down and you feel that it's too much color, you can always go back to your water and it will blend it together. So I hope you can see there what I'm talking about. So here's this nice, nice red. And you can actually see if I take the brown and show the edges of the leaf. So you see that it's beginning to build. Let's go back and get some regular watercolor. These watercolors are a little bit pale when the pens can be very, very bold, but they're so pretty nonetheless. So let's see what else I've got here. Here's a different, a different brown. And this is from another child's marker, right? right from the library. We've got a very bold green that you might not even think of using. Oops. Somehow, somehow it doesn't want to go back in the container, but that's all right. I'll worry about that later. So let's put some of this darker green on the edge. And you can see it starts to become a little bit of a meditation. Um, you can get daring and add a color like this purple that you weren't even anticipating, but it might make a very nice shading inside something there like that, that orange or this green. And you see that shading some of these edges really, really makes it pop. And it gives you a little more control about what your picture, your leaf, is looking like. This really reminded me as I was working on this the other day and a, and a memory came up in my Facebook page that it was exactly one year ago that I was on this group and I was painting leaves. And those leaves were right on watercolor paper and we were using the watercolor brushes. I think at that time I was just getting accustomed to using these brushes and beginning to enjoy how beautiful they are and the results that you get from them. And as I'm doing it, I'm thinking probably because you don't need a lot of water. Let's straighten that guy out. You don't need a lot of water. It's almost dry brushing to use the, the pens in this fashion and use your, I'll give it a little bit of thing, use your palette almost, your uh, background as your palette. So um, I think I'll go back to that yellow and re-energize some of that bright yellow for the acrylic. Now the acrylic has a very nice texture. It adds a little bit of body to your leaf, but you can see that you could keep working on these uh, over and over and over again until you're satisfied with the result. I'm gonna add a little more green. I always try to remind myself, you know, that the leaf did start as a green leaf and it's just changing into these fall colors. Let's try some of this red watercolor. It's a little bit pale. Somehow it's, it's not giving me the brightness 
that I might want from a pen. So let's, I hope you can see, I'm sorry that, let's move this up. You can see as I'm continuing on here. Now, you can do this as long as you like and until you get results that are satisfying to you. Um, but what's interesting too is as it dries, it might be a little bit pale. If it's a little bit too pale and it's not what you had in mind, you can always add to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and lay this on the side and I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab one over here that's just very, very pale. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm not really pleased with the way this one came out. So I'm gonna lay it down and I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. You see, I'm trying to wet it flat so I don't have a ton of wrinkles in it. And as you can see, when it's wet, it looks a little bit darker. But if I wanna brighten this guy up, I'll try some of these, these pens. And see if I can make this a little bit brighter. So I hope that this begins to show you how fun this is and a relaxing thing to do. I mean there's there's not been a lot of good news lately in the news and sometimes just escape from the news into something that's relaxing like this and fun to do and actually if you end up with a nice result at the end, such as uh, making a centerpiece, I may just take some of these leaves and sprinkle them down the center of my Thanksgiving table. I think that would be quite lovely. I'm going to actually try a different brown here. Um, just, I assume, just watching gives you an idea of how you might want to shade something. It, it puts me almost in the mind of stenciling, but almost backwards, because when it's a, a cut stencil, you're working through the hole in the stencil to paint. And this is just this uh, crazy coffee filter paper stuck to this card here and I'm painting right on top of it. So you can see how uh, fun that is. And uh, when the leaves are dry, or almost dry, I would suggest that you peel them off. Now, if you peel them off while they're still a little bit wet, they'll get a nice little curl in them which looks good too. But I will mention that um, on the oak leaf branch that I made, I did these oak leaf shapes. And what I did here was to make the center vein stand out, I folded the leaf right along that center vein, just like about halfway down. And I did the two on the side as well so that it, it gives you a little more of a realistic look. And then when I stuck it to the branch, actually having the fold in it gave it a little more strength uh, to, to uh, hold on and not flop because you don't, you don't want floppy leaves. Of course, at that point, you've also got, uh, I used a glue gun to stick the, the leaves on the branches. So I think you have a pretty good idea there on how to paint the leaves, and it's really fun to take a long time to do that. If you were using a branch uh, and you wanted to hang it, you could take uh, some yarn and you could tie uh, a, a slice of yarn on between here and here and just tie it and hang it. Or what I did was I used a wire to hang mine and I just took a length of wire that I thought uh, was gonna be long enough, and it looks like it's probably a foot and a half, 
and to make a circle in the center, I just wrapped it right around one of my bottles of acrylic here, as you can see, and then I twisted it. Let's see if I can do that in front of the camera. So I'll pull it off. So now that it has this loop, all I would have to do is wrap the wire around my twig get rid of this blocking everything and I would have an easy way to hang it up I used a little piece of wire and made a hook I can hang that right from my kitchen curtain uh, very very easily Let's see what can I show you I think I will remove that I think I may take the You can see that these that I started here are still a little bit wet. So I would give them a little bit longer to dry before I pull them off and let them, them dry completely. And then if I were going to attach them to the mobile, to that stick to make the mobile, you want a little lightweight cord. So I think that uh, the embroidery floss works pretty well. I used thread for the one that I have here hanging behind me, and, and I find it's getting a little bit too much wind, and it's tangling up a little bit. It's the one that was hanging in, in, in headquarters, if you saw it hanging on our tree in headquarters. But all I really did was tie a knot in the floss, and if you wanted it to be super secure, you could, you know, actually take another stitch in there and then it's ready just to tie directly onto your stick so really it's quite quite simple <clears throat> the uh the quote that i found for this class is autumn is a second spring when every leaf is a flower i'm going to bring the, the camera back up to me here I can. All right. So as you see, the wire is just looped around, and these are just strung. These are just on a thread. So this is very, very fragile. I think the embroidery floss or yarn might do a little better job, but really, as you walk by, it does move in the wind. The I don't know if I, you can see this, but the branch that I did, I have put in a vase filled with rocks, and I've really gone to town with this large, large branch and put the oak leaves on, and that's going to be a fabulous centerpiece on my Thanksgiving table. So I wish you all the best. I hope that you have a happy Thanksgiving too. I'll be back again before that with some more centerpiece ideas. I think I'll just give you give myself a little plug. I'll be making three-dimensional gourds and squashes for your Thanksgiving table next time. So I hope you're, you'll be interested in coming back. And as always, I thank you for coming. I thank you for coming into the library. We've been open for months now and more and more folks are coming in and we're so, so happy to see your smiling faces. So I hope you enjoy this craft. I hope you try it and enjoy it and share it with the kids. You can all sit down and paint these uh, coffee filters together. The watercolors are non-toxic, the pens are non-toxic, everything is water-based, and I have not found it staining anything. So thanks so much for coming, and we'll see you next time at Adult Arts and Crafts from the Warren County Library. Have a great day.